Yep. All right, I think I'm running a version of the viewer that has the voice fixes, but uh, anyway, whatever it is, I guess we'll find out. Uh, let's see what's going on this week. We had a promotion of LMR5, so that should be the default viewer download now. That has some long requested and awaited graphics fixes. Um, the next promotion is going to be the new user experience viewer, um, which has some uh, UI changes and also has a new guidebook uh, for primarily for helping uh, you know newbies learn their way around the the world in the new uh, Welcome Island areas. Um, Let's see what else is going on. We had a bit of a cert-related scare. There was an update to one of the certs used on our system, um, which caused uh, Linden Dollar buys and land buys to break. Um, obviously, that's a bad thing, and we don't want it to happen. Um, and we were afraid it was going to require a viewer fix uh, but it looks like we're actually going to be able to just uh, uh, get the get the cert to be um, in the in the format that our viewer expects, and so we won't have to be uh, treating this as a as a major viewer breaking crisis. Um, we'll still get a viewer change out that uh, you know addresses this problem if it ever occurs in the future, but it won't be. Uh, you know, a big rush. It'll just come out in one of the upcoming, uh, probably maintenance releases. Yeah. I mean, what actually happened was we had some overly aggressive checking happening in the viewer, where it was uh, was being very picky about expecting the certs that it received to have certain properties that you can't necessarily assume that is going to happen. Um, so the fix is just to take that extra checking out. Uh, let's see what else is going on. Uh, we have various v other viewers in progress after new user experience. Um, there's the next generation of the main viewer. Uh, there's the... Uh, uh, as profiles work, we have some new uh, UI updates in progress for uh, trying to improve that a bit. It's it's still it's still basically based on the you know the legacy profiles code that we've had kicking around for a while, but making some uh, uh, kind of cleanup on the user experience side. Uh, I've got a fix that has support for notarization on the Mac, so we'll stop getting those stupid warnings. That will be nice. Um, so yeah, a few other things in play, but uh, just uh, continuing to crank along on all that stuff. And Grumpy's here. Grumpy, anything uh, to talk about this week? I'm just here for backup in case the scary TPV developers rush and attack you. Well, they haven't gotten too aggressive so far, but it's good to it's good to have somebody else watching. So, I guess that's Probably most of it. Uh, SLB exhibit, okay. That's awesome. I'm really looking forward to SLB. Yeah, Second Life is what, old enough to vote now? Mm. 
guests also to smoke. Um, Beck, I don't know if the beta includes uh, the voice changes that we have, um, but we've internally seen the do wonders uh, for actually being heard and not clipping. Um, and meetings are now not made up of your cutting out and conversations can be had and people can be heard. Yeah, right now that's in mate F. It's not um, it's not out in the default viewer yet. It'll be it's gotten pulled into a couple of viewers actually, so the voice changes will be in whatever we promote next, I believe. So I think um, I think they've been pulled into the Nux viewer, the user experience, which uh, is, is the is the likely next promotion. Yeah, oh, that makes sense, Beck. Sorry, we uh, just missed the cutoff on that one. Yeah, that's a tough one. It's always tempting to wait for just one more thing and wind up not releasing anything for two years.
Uh, yeah, I don't really know what uh, you know Unity slash Vivox's long term plan is. We haven't uh, we haven't heard anything about uh, changes like that. Um, you know, we're still using their whatever it is version four API, which changing from that to to their current gen version five would be pretty traumatic because there's no there's no cross compatibility right all the all the viewers would just break and have to start running the new API and there would be quite a bit of code to make it work too so um uh, my guess is that there's not any kind of free lunch there where uh everything is just going to be updated in such a way that it starts working on on Linux or whatever Yeah, I'm not sure about that. They haven't told us that they're end of life in Vivox 4. It's you know we just had a meeting with them yesterday, um, and we're we're you know that's still what we're using. Uh, okay, you say it's based on the bounding box. Um, so is it picking the center of the bounding box or the nearest point on the bounding box, or what's what's the kind of cutoff criterion there? Changing to uh, uh, Vivox version 5 would require some ch client changes too, wouldn't it? I don't think that the, I don't think it's just a drop-in replacement where you could keep using the same viewer code. Yeah. That part would also be uh, not ideal.
Yeah, also the bounding box should be based on the uh, kind of actual extent of the avatar's contents rather than just some uh, kind of pre-computed thing. Got some logic in the viewer now for for dynamically updating um, the bounding box based on on skinning data. Yeah, well, I mean, that was why we tried to do the um, dynamic bounding box stuff, uh, you know, because a lot of the sort of pre, pre-computed bounding box, if you just like, if you just take whatever the prim claims its size is and use that to build a bounding box, then it's often going to be just total garbage. Um, so you may get like unrealistically high bounding boxes, or you could get... Um, you can also get unrealistically low, uh, you know, rendering costs and stuff as a result of that too. So the whole thing is pretty dicey. Okay, thanks, Beck. Maybe that's a place where we're not using the dynamic bounding box. I mean, I know you guys weren't too keen on the dynamic bounding box because it it does add some cost to keeping it up to date, but I don't really know another good solution. Um, you know, we uh, we can't go and, and just correct all of the prim parameters. And in any case, it does change dynamically based on what animations you're playing and and uh, you know things like that okay thanks kitty okay so there are still places where we're using that uh, misleading size value that's definitely going to throw you off You know, it may just be a thing where we've got several different code paths that aren't all mutually consistent. I mean, not that that ever happens in our code, but I, I could imagine it's theoretically possible.
Of course, if the distance calculation is messed up, that's going to mess up the uh, LOD swap calculations too. Yeah, it's uh, it's definitely a problem. We are going to be spending some time working on. We actually have already started looking into this. Um, we're going to be spending more time this year working on performance-related issues, um, probably including uh, looking into some options around LODs. So we will let you know when we get farther with that.
All right. Well, anything else we should talk about this time? We can always run off and do other things for a bit if you want. Oh, we did have one uh, kind of procedural question. Um, we've gotten queries about, uh, you know, whether meetings should be voice or not voice, and I realize that uh, asking a bunch of people who are using voice about their preferences isn't the uh, doesn't give you complete coverage. But um, just just as a starter for for asking around about this, what what preference do you guys have? Are you happy keeping it with voice? Would you rather be doing all all text? Um, any thoughts on that? I'll admit my preference is for the way they've been running now because it allows both for a single presenter to be speaking at a time and to more easily uh, construct what the conversation is uh, in terms of not trying to follow threads of discussion. And we do try to keep up with everything that's in text, yes. Yeah, I've been in meetings where there was so much text flying around that it was uh, it was hard to stay on top of it and also try to sort of manage the voice conversation. Um, but uh, this this one has generally been pretty manageable. It hasn't tended to be a problem. Yeah, next time content creators rolls around, I'll uh, I'll ask the same question there.
Yeah, I would think if you're depending on translation, it probably is easier to, to deal with text in that case. Yeah, I don't know anything about uh, the quality of uh, Vivox 5. All right, well, that's all I had. Uh, just a quick question. So have a good weekend, all, and we will talk to you later.